exercise classes and some of you know me for other means as well. And uh, just to give you a little bit of a quick background as to who I am and what I do so you, you know, get to know who I am. Um, I've been in private practice as a nutritionist here at Mount Kisco for 19 and a half years. So I have a tremendous amount of, you know, practice and knowledge working with patients and I work with cancer patients, I work with people with GI problems, I work with cholesterol, diabetes, weight loss, weight gain, and so on as well. And also, actually, uh, we also work with children as well, too. Particularly children as it relates to cholesterol and weight and, and those kinds of you know, issues. Um, and then tonight, we're going to really be focusing on immunity, because that's really an important topic, I think, you know, nowadays with everything on the news about the H1N1 flu, and then just to really help people know what are things that you can do to take control of your own health. Because a lot of it is really just helping your own immunity. And if we can really focus in on what you can do to take care of yourselves, you know, that will really help you through the flu season, through the winter, and, and so on. And I think some of these um, facts that I'm going to go over with you are going to be really new information and also probably surprising as well. Um, no, I was intending to lecture first and then do questions after, but I'm very comfortable taking questions as I go through my lecture. I don't get distracted. So if you feel you're, you might forget the question you'd like to ask me, feel free to ask me as I'm going through it. Okay, so I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, we're going to try and keep it to an hour because I know some of you are on a tight schedule. Um, and then those of you who have other questions, you're welcome to email me, provided it's not, you know, pages and pages of questions. <laughs> Okay, great. So you should all have an orange sheet in your folder. And that's really the program of what we're going to be doing today. So number one is the introduction, which I already went over. And then number two, talking about what affects our immunity, um, whether it's positive or negative. So we're going to go through all the things that have that effect on us. Okay. And then the last part is taking a look at some of the things we can do nutritionally as well as supplement-wise. Um, and the supplements that I focused on, I really focused on keeping things that were cost effective for people, so, but, uh, but equally effective in terms of helping with immunity, okay? Because there's lots of things on the market that help with immunity, and some of them, you know, range in prices, and they can be over $100. Some of them can be as little as $20. So I really focused on what, for the bang you're getting, what are you getting that's going to be optimal? And what works across the board, you know, whether it's a bacterial infection, a viral infection, Okay, so something that's more broad spectrum rather than just being specific. Okay, super. So let's take a look at uh, what things affect our immunity. So urinary pH, are all of you familiar with the idea of urinary pH testing our pH? Anybody here not familiar with that at all? Okay, good, so let's talk about that. Um, urinary pH, basically the optimal pH of our urine, I mean to really achieve good health and to maintain and sustain good health, um, is between 6.4 and 7. And typically the most accurate time to test your pH is first thing in the morning between 5 and 7 a.m. before you've eaten anything or drunk anything. This is the absolute most important thing as a foundation, okay, in order to really start getting the most out of your food, the most out of all the other lifestyle things that you can be doing. I mean, if you do all the right things and the one thing you ignore is your urinary pH, you're not going to be completely healthy. Okay, so it's truly the foundation to prevent osteoporosis, um, to prevent, you know, some of the more degenerative types of diseases, the urinary pH is extremely critical, excuse me, critical. So we need to really work on that. And actually what I brought along was just to show some of you basically what it is, the pH strips, they come in a roll, okay, it's in a paper roll. And what you have is you have a color-coded chart, and it tells you where 6.4 is, it's sort of like a pale green, and then 7 is like a really nice dark green. So the idea is not to be below 6.4 or not to be above 7. Okay, because most, actually all bacteria and viruses will thrive in an environment either less than 6.4 or above 7. Get them like at CVS. Yeah, exactly. Where do you get these? Usually yeah. from the drugstore. Exactly, CVS, right? Or Andre, can you tell us where else? What's a bit where we can get these? At gynacadels.com. Also, we have it too. <laughs> <laughs> this is green. Do they have it? Great. Sometimes. Okay, so Some health food stores have it. Whole Foods probably might. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's pH strips. Mm. Exactly. Okay. And the urine, by the way, is what we use as opposed to saliva testing, because they they found through research that that's actually more accurate. 
Okay, so the urine, and ideally you want to make sure you're in that range of 6.4 to 7, you know, at least when you track it, track it for a couple of weeks and see where your numbers are. <coughs> okay. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Okay, so the urinary pH is really the absolute most important foundation, okay? Um, you, you know, you won't develop gout as you get older, you won't develop arthritis if you maintain that healthy pH. I mean, that's really is very critical. Cool. And if you're below or above, it's the device. Okay, um, if you're below 6.4, you need to bump up fruits and veggies in the diet, and preferably more raw as opposed to cooked. You do want, you should include some cooked, you know, vegetables, but the idea is to do more on the raw side. So as opposed to eating applesauce, you would eat an apple, okay, that kind of thing. That raises your pH. And that will help raise the pH. So often it's an imbalance. You're eating too much protein, too much carbohydrates, too much sugar, and not enough fruits and vegetables to keep that balance. And if you're above seven? And then if you're above seven, you're too alkaline. Um, so typically, what we do if you're above you seven point two is okay. Seven point two. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So the key thing is not to go above seven point two uh, or higher. Okay. So um, the range, yeah, they keep changing the ranges. I mean, it used to be six, and now it's actually higher. Do you have pens with you? Pens? Yes, um, we have pens actually right back here. They are a dollar. Okay. Great. Oh, silver. Okay. Um, great. Thanks. Okay, so that's good. Norman. So if you're above a, if you're above a seven seven point two, um, it could be medication induced. Oh. Okay. Something to keep in mind. Um, so the idea is that we st we still keep up with the fruits and vegetables to keep that balance. Okay. So it's not more specific thing that would lower your pH. Sometimes just doing like aloe vera juice is one way to do that because aloe vera juice has a very positive effect on balancing the pH. Um, so that could be one way to do it, sure. Um, and the other thing is also taking adequate minerals. That's a good um, question. So adequate minerals. Often, if you don't have enough minerals in your diet, whether it's from food. Um, or supplements, then typically taking enough minerals will also help keep that pH balance. Would you be low 6.4 if you aren't taking enough minerals? Absolutely. Yes, yes very good. And, and then, um, and we'll come to the chart that I'm going to show you, the organic food chart. You know, people say, well, is there really a difference between eating organic or non-organic? This was a study that was done by Rutgers University, so we'll take a look at the research later. When we come to food, food and beverage choices, which is actually the next topic. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions on urinary pH before we move on? All right, good. Everyone's clear on that. So that's really critical to optimal health. Also, by the way, you tend to be more positive when your pH is at a healthier level. Uh, people who tend to be more irritable, more grumpy, more depressed are often at a very low, a much lower uh, pH level. So your mood also can tell, give us an indicator of where you are in your pH. Okay, good. Um, so food and beverage choices. Um, Many of you know that if you have poor food choices, all right, now what do I mean by poor food choices? Anybody? Let's see where everybody is with it. Jump. Yeah, what is jump? Give me an example, John. Sugar. Be specific. Oreo cookies, French fries, French fries cheeseburgers. cheeseburgers, exactly. You, you, have <laughs> you have the idea. All right. So food in terms of, yeah, processed foods, frozen TV dinners, by the way, everybody. Okay, so frozen TV dinners, that falls into that category. So as much as possible, you want your food to be fresh, freshly prepared. Okay, that's very important. Less on cans. The only cans that are acceptable would be beans in the can. Okay, not baked beans with lots of sugar in them. But, the, you know, black beans or lentils or anything like that. If you don't have time to cook beans, then that's one exception. 